I'm Pramod Bajate. I lead the Cognitive Campus Portfolio here at Arista. I want to just give a little bit of uh, background about myself. I've been in Wi-Fi and Access uh, for a time. Uh, I started off uh, back when the first controller-based architecture was introduced at a startup that some of you may recall if you've been around in the industry for a long time called Airspace. I was uh, leading engineering there, went into Cisco and have been sort of, uh, you know, had the privilege of firsthand viewing the various transitions and evolutions we've gone through. Uh, and so I'm excited to share about what I find unique here at Arista. So first things first, um, you know, you guys were talking about earlier about you've got what you uh, from, uh, you know, various companies in terms of pants and shirts. Well, at Arista, we have a tradition that started, I think, in a uh, couple of years where we sponsor plants uh, to, you know, as a token of our appreciation for people at conference, dedicates such as you. So if some of you recall, at the last MFD six we had uh, that we attended, we had sponsored a tree, um, and this is in a geologically restored area in in Pune, India. The founder of Mojo, uh, you know, is very passionate about it and planted a tree in all of your names. I'm happy to state that all of those trees are thriving, um, and we have also done the same thing by uh, a tree for all the delegates today. So here are not a complete list, but here are the plants that were planted, uh, you know, in July of 2021. We go to the next slide. You know, it's hard to make out in these pictures, but they're all, you know, you know, taking the steps towards growing and, um, you know, uh, we'll, we'll send you a event which has actually now a dashboard where you can go and click on links and look at your own plants that are planted for MFD8 as well as we planted at MFD6. So with that, let's jump on to, um, uh, the presentation itself. So uh, a little bit about Arista's cognitive campus journey. Uh, you know, as I was stated before, Arista made its name in cloud networking. It was initially named for its product in data center. We first entered the campus in 2018, as was stated before, through the launching of uh, POE products, as well as the acquisition of Mojo, uh, where we launched our MyPy portfolio. We also integrated that into Cloud Vision. And over the next four years, we've actually been busy integrating that into uh, Arista's rest of the architecture, as you'll see today. One is the integration into Cloud Vision itself. The other fairly fun thing we've been busy over is uh, this architectural uh, you know, aspect you'll hear, network data lake. This is where we've sort of built our architecture for being able to take streaming telemetry at scale and to be able to store that in a way such that it allows us to build uh, the cognitive applications. You will see some examples of that from Sri today. Um, and then over the last couple of years, we've been busy in sort of also taking our portfolio down market. So we've come out with compact on the low, we've come out with edge as a service. We've come out with some integrations, uh, you know, called cognitive unified edge. Uh, and uh, Kumar is going to, you know, give you a brief introduction on that later on. So what's, <clears throat> I'm sorry, Landon Foster here. Uh, what's driven sort of reminiaturization. You know, usually we see enterprise vendors go from the small to the big, right? You can see uh, SMB Ubiquity kind of is doing that now, right? They're very small to bigger, but you look like you're driving in the other direction. Is that focused because of edge or? I think you're right. It's, it's a focus on edge and it's also what we were hearing from many of our customers was our portfolio was more catered higher end enterprise. And there was an ask, uh, especially from some of the managed service providers, that they were looking to get some of the same benefits, but uh, at the lower end of the portfolio at lower price points. And so that's that's the reason we it was it was a market expansion for us, but also based on the ask from some of our customers. Thank you. Uh, uh, the one thing I just want to talk about is, uh, you know, as we've expanded over the last four years, uh, we've actually seen tremendous success, uh, even from um, you know, our market expansion. Uh, you know, just to give you some numbers, uh, we of doubled our business last year in campus uh, consistently in wired as well as wireless and we're looking to do again this year um, we've actually uh, now been deployed uh, in some of the most demanding enterprise customers and verticals from sort of large cloud providers to healthcare customers uh, public uh, higher ed uh, universities uh, at, at, at very large scales uh, so we've come a long way from the early days of mojo uh, you know in 2018 uh, to uh, now having fairly wide, uh, large deployment in Eastern or Wi-Fi. Now, uh, a little bit about what drives uh, that success. One of the things that we hear consistently 
Now, I've been with Arista for about a year, and I can tell you that when I talk to customers, the one thing I consistently hear from customers on why they choose Arista is one, um, we've been very maniacal about making sure that we bring consistency in operations. When it comes to switching, that means having that one OS. I've heard about that before, um, and, 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 and you know, EOS drives no matter where, uh, what device it is and where it's in the network. On the wireless side, it's not US because the footprint uh, does not lend itself to the access points, but uh, we are following some of the same principles as uh, US when it comes to development. And then I talked about network data lake. Uh, this is something we built uh, you know, for scale, and we made sure that this is unified regardless of what devices are feeding symmetry into it. Uh, and sort of that drives consistent operations through cloud vision. And that's very different than sort of in terms of the branching nightmare and the platforms that you have to deal with, um, you know, with, 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 with other solutions. So now uh, I talked about the development approach that Arista has, which is unique. Uh, you know, you've probably heard from Ken Duda in Tech Field Day or some of the other forums, and he's popular with some of his videos on YouTube as well. Uh, uh, so I definitely can't channel his passion on this topic, but uh, you know, I can tell you from what I have observed here at Arista, you know, the, the, the number one principle is we never compromise on quality. Everything starts with, you know, you know, doesn't matter time to market considerations, doesn't market, doesn't matter what's happening on the competitive side. We focus on making sure that the products are built the right way and are built. So that's number one. Number two, as I said earlier, we make sure that whatever we are building is built consistently across the network. So it's not different in different places of the network, or we don't have different versions that, if you will. And thirdly, we are building everything with the intent that we build the base infrastructure, make sure we have the right data, which is real time, which is rich, which can be processed at scale. Because you know one of the problems with telemetry is, yes, you can have real time telemetry, but I've seen this in many other places I've been, that when you start processing this at scale, you know, from all your devices, thousands of devices in the network, um, you know, you know, the things just, you know, buckle over on the back end. So we've made sure that this is scalable. And now, as you'll see later on, some of our cognitive applications on this data. All right. So um, here are some of the things which uh, are unique about our mobility architecture. And we'll talk about some of these in the later session today. The first thing I've already talked about, you know, we focused on data, streaming telemetry, building the network data lake, right? and then building the cognitive applications on top of it. Second thing, we this is again another principle which is very, you know, which is uh, very dear to Arista, which is we build things based on standards where we can. And so, you know, we have an architecture which does not rely on a controller uh, based on, you know, the data plane is based on VXLAN. We have a distributed control plane. Uh, our management plane uh, is in cloud. Uh, it can be in your private data center or it could be in a public cloud, but it is based on standard based API. So we have open config model for everything and we have customers who have deployed it, um, you know, you know, with building their own management systems on top of our APs without relying on ours. So we do that level of integration. And thirdly, uh, security and network assurance, we believe is should be a native function of uh, the, the networking devices themselves. So uh, Arista has been one of the few companies through the Mojo days that we have built. Uh, uh, we've always had a dedicated radio uh, in our access points. That helps with one, making sure that we have the right level of information to be able to you know, do the right uh, you know, radio resource management, but also helps with making sure that our security is foolproof. Uh, and we have some algorithms as Jatin will talk about later where you know, we make sure that, you know, when we tell you about something, you know, we give you an alert on security. It's something that you need to act on. We avoid false positives, which is one of the challenges that we've seen with WIPs is done by others. Um, we also have built, uh, just one secretary, we've also built network assurance function natively so that we act as clients in the network uh, using that third radio to make sure that we can verify how your network is uh, working uh, without requiring a worldly network. Um, Hi, this is Ali. I got a quick question on the NDR sensors. Are those just like something like like the Cape sensors or Waybot or Seven Signal? Is that something uh, like a, another device that? No, this is this is not like Seven Signal. Uh, the Seven Signal would be like the, the 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 proactive network assurance where our radios act as client can connect their access points and then report on what the uh, MOS tour is for a voice application and you know stuff like that. 
The NDR is a security function. It's called network detection and response. It's doing threat hunting. It's a function of our campus switches where we natively integrated this sensor that is essentially monitoring real time traffic and then converting the data into things like, you know, you know, people, organizations, you know, who's accessing what, and then sends that data over to cloud where we process it for, you know, doing behavioral analytics and detecting any security concerns. So um, it's not necessarily a function of our wireless products, but the way our customers buy it, they deploy the wireless access points along with the switches and this sort of forms part of the broader security story. So yeah. uh, there are two components, right? This whole NDR, uh, there is a agent as Pramod described, which is part of our switching portfolio. And the primary purpose of this agent is to generate something called activity record. So basically it's telling the um, Arista virtual assistant, what we call as AVA engine, what is going on in the network in a very compact way. It is not just sending the packets over, it's actually generating something called activity records. Mm -hmm. The processing happens in the cloud of course, you, anything we do in cloud, because we really don't hard code a whole lot of thing. If somebody insists on having an on-prem solution, they can have it. But most of the time, we'll prefer to, to be in cloud because the elastic will expand and shrink as the demands increase and decrease. Uh, so this combination is really what allows us to do the uh, network uh, detection and response. And this also goes to the openness of the protocol. So even though this function is not natively integrated into the access point, the fact that the access points are putting out just regular Ethernet packet with the MAC address of the end client basically allows us to exercise that whole policy, even though the packets are actually coming off of an AP at that point in time. Okay. Thank you, Kumar. Uh, all right. Uh, this is the vision that sort of guide roadmap. You know, we are on a journey to build a self healing autonomous network. And you might say that, well, this is fancy title. How does this, what does this mean in terms of practical terms that we're doing in terms of, you know, the features that we're developing uh, in our products? Um, you know, what we have today, um, based on that network data lake and some of the applications you'll see, we've built anomaly detection, we've built root cause analysis, we've built a recommendation engine. Um, and and, and what, what we are planning to do is to, you know, test that out based on the data we have in cloud and how many times people turn on and take on actions based on the recommendation engine and start automating that. Initially, under the uh, you know the, the, the network admins uh, you know approval, but it allow them to just click and say automatically take these actions next time you see this. Uh, and you know it doesn't have to be fancy. Initially, it could be just simple things like when you do a software image upgrade, when you do a configuration download in in a specific location, be able to you know detect how the network is behaving based on KPIs before and after, and be able to set policies so that you can roll back things uh, when something goes south. Uh, so this is something you'll see some examples of the early of, uh, you know, what we are doing here. Um, and uh, this is, uh, you know, what, what guides us uh, in terms of uh, all the features we are building. Uh, 